you remember any time any temptation is coming to fall to that same old sin you say no not now not now i've graduated from that life of failure i i have graduated from that life of failure now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy verse 25 to the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever by looking at philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 10. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. That I, this Paul the Apostle, he was saved. That I, this Paul the Apostle, he was already sanctified. That I, this Paul the Apostle, was already filled and baptized, energized, empowered by the Holy Ghost. And yet, he wanted to know God more. And whatever level of knowledge, whatever level of intimacy, whatever level of relationship you have with God, with Christ today, there is still more. And so he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. In verse 11, it says, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, verse 12, not as though I'd already obtained or neither were ready perfect. Many people don't understand that part of scripture. Not that had already attained. It's not talking of you know salvation, initial salvation. He got that already. Not that had already attained. It's not talking of being sanctified as a definite work of grace. He got that already. Not as though I've already attained. It's not talking about baptism in the Holy Ghost. It was already filled with the Holy Ghost. Not that I'd already attained. It's not talking about gifts of the Spirit. Look at his life. He already had all those gifts of the Spirit. What did he mean then? Not that I already attained. He's been to the third heavens. And he knew the promises of God, the prophecy of God, and the provisions available in heaven. And he said, there is still more in heaven to add to what I have. There is still more in heaven to be given to me, much more and above what I've got. And he said, therefore, I don't think I've got everything that heaven has to offer. Not as though I'd already attained, neither were ready perfect. That word perfect means complete complete totally complete in everything provided by heaven but i follow after that i may apprehend that for which also i am apprehended of christ jesus verse 13 in verse 13 brethren i count not myself to have apprehended there's still more i'm still expecting there's still more i'm praying for there's still more i'm going to have there is still more of resemblance to the christ of heaven my savior that i still need to have therefore i don't see after after any message i hear i don't need to pray now i've got it all i'm saved i'm sanctified i'm filled with the holy ghost he said no there is still more this day there is still more for you there is more for me you know those people that you know they hear the word of god and after we say rise up and let us pray they run back home they don't think there's anything heaven has for them anymore they've got it all they don't know what is going to happen tomorrow they've got it all they don't know what they're going to confront next week they get they've got it all everyone that understands that there is still something something from the throne of god to be given unto them they pray they look at the word they have heard and they look at that word of grace and that word of power and they say i need that i want that i will get that that's why they wait behind to pray he said brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before look at verse 14 i press on i press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of god 
in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, you see, let us therefore as many as be perfect. Paul, I thought you said you are not perfect, you know. What I meant there is that I'm not complete yet. There's still something for me to get from heaven. But I have perfect salvation. I have perfect sanctification. I have the perfect complete baptism in the Holy Ghost. I have the complete gifts of the Spirit. And our people like him, let us therefore, as many of the perfect, be those minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Verse 16. In verse 16, nevertheless, when we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing verse 17 brethren be ye followers together of me think about that be ye followers together of me if his neighbors church members have seen him moving in an illicit illegal way with a woman you couldn't say be ye followers of me hey you have been tampering with church money and people they're gossiping and telling themselves you know our you know our paul is a great man it's a great preacher but he pilfers he steals it takes church money. He couldn't have said, be ye followers of me. If he was getting angry at every little thing that happens, and he will burst out with anger. You know, a man like that couldn't say, be ye followers of me. A person that will say, be ye followers of me, Christ is reigning in his life. Christ is reigning on his temper. Christ is reigning in his behavior. Christ is reigning in his conduct. And if you're going to say, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm a leader, and I want people to follow me, then you must have what Paul the Apostle had, the grace of God that made him to live a life conformable to the life of Christ. Brethren, be ye for to follow us together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example look at verse 20 in verse 20 it tells us for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ verse 21 in verse 21 who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able according to his working it works in our lives it works in our body it works in our family it works in our character it works in our experiences and it says according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself he'll subdue everything in our lives to himself in jesus name number three now number three we're looking at the permanent authorization of the acknowledged son the acknowledged son the father acknowledged him and he still acknowledges him today the son of god how son of god because he lived a perfect life that reflected the life, the character, the attributes of God, Son of God. The Son of Man. Why? Because he lived as a perfect man. The way man from the time of Adam should have lived. But Adam failed. The way all those people, men, in every generation, the way they should have lived, they failed. But he came to show us how the perfect man ought to live, the son of man. And now the son of God has come to earth to take sons and daughters of men and make them live like the son of man. And he has all the authority. And he's giving us the authority. He's transferring the authority unto us that we might live the victorious life. Live 
the triumphant life. Live the overcoming life. He authorizes us to be like him. He authorizes us to do like him. He authorizes us to walk like him. The permanent authorization of the acknowledged son. We're looking at Luke chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority. What kind of power? The same power he had, he gave unto them. You couldn't give anything less than what you have, and you can't give anything higher than what you have. The power he had over sin, over sickness, over Satan, over evil, over all situations. He gave them power and authority. That's authorization. He authorized them. He said, I've demonstrated it before you. I've lived before you. And here now you are to go. Anywhere you go, you are to do what I do. And what I could do, what I can do, go and do that. He gave them power and authority over all devils. We have the power. You have the power to and to kill diseases. Amen. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Are you ready? Has anybody ever given you a book? As he did, just one, he said, This will benefit brother so and so. This will benefit sister so and so. And he bought that book and he gave each unto you. Anything like that happened before? Answer. The question is, have you read the book? Have you opened the book? Have you got everything inside that, you know, God gives us power. Christ gives us power. And he gives us authorization. And if you ask the average person, even the above average, if you ask, he gave you power. Have you ever used that power? Many people know. He gave you power to heal. Have you ever healed? No. Anytime sickness situation comes, I call our state overseer. Anytime any situation comes, I call on our leader to link me up with the general superintendent. How about the one you have? You have pain. You are not using it. You have to come to me to use my pen for you. You have authorization. You are not using. You have the name of Jesus. And that name of Jesus will work mighty in your mouth as it works in my mouth in Jesus' name. You have assurance in Christ. And you have faith in Christ. And you know, with your God and with your Christ, all things are possible. Why are you just collecting gifts of books? And so and so give you. A book so and so give you a book and they're all piled there you are not reading when the next person wants to give you a book why don't you say all that they have given me i've not even started reading why do you just collect and collect and collect and here we are today again power is coming to you authority is coming to you use the power that he gives you and use the authority that he gives you sickness will bow before you Demons will bow before you. All those attacks and all those afflictions, they will bow before you in Jesus' name. Then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to kill diseases. I got it. I got it. You will use it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 there, look at what the Lord is telling us. In verse 2 it says, And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, he tells us, And he departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Amen. After this crusade, I'll be hearing news from you. That you go to all the towns, all the villages, all the communities, and you're using the power that the Lord had given unto you in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading there from verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And it says, 
I give unto you, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Somebody shout, Amen. Yeah. When you have something like oppression, attack, affliction, something is walking at my back. Something is walking in my tight. Something is moving in my stomach. What did you do about it? I ran to the prayer warriors. I said, I need this. I need this. And they pray and pray and pray. And then you go back. And you know that thing. He knows you are not using the power that the Lord has given you. And then you run there again. You will not run again. I will not run again. Uh -uh. little headache pray now little stomach problem pray now uh, there's something that is pulling my uh, pulling my nerve and my muscle there pray you will overcome i will overcome behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over and over all the power of the enemy over all the power of the enemy. <laughs> Pastor, I read a lot, but the enemies will not allow me to retain what I read. I didn't read this one. Pastor, I make effort. I try, 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 but I come back to square one. No progress in my life. Enemies will not allow me. Uh -uh. You are the one magnifying those enemies. Those enemies of your life, they are nothing. They will come to nothing. It says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, if in your life, you take this verse, you read it, read it, read it. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You go, you go, and then you come back home. Before you do anything, if you're taking a glass of water, you open it, give, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You're going to sleep at night, you do your normal quiet time, and you read everything you want to read, and then before you fall asleep, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You wake up in the morning, you do your devotion, family devotion, and all that, but before you go out, you come back, you behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means such you you're traveling to the village after you've made all your preparations and your power your Lord, and then you have prayed and you have said all the, the grace and then you open to this again i'm going to the village behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you when you read and read and read it becomes part of your life it will mix with your blood it will get into your brain it will be in your faith it will as you are taking the walk every step behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy from now till you see jesus face to face nothing shall by any means hurt you who am i speaking to there where are you today it will start rise up and tell the lord and say lord here i am lord here i am i have the victory tell the lord tell the lord open your mouth and say lord here i am everything he has said the authority of christ that is always able you're not praying tell the lord tell the lord tell the lord Prevailing authority of the Almighty Sovereign. Receive him as a personal savior. Know him as the ever present savior. Recognize his presence in your life. 
this word of promise in your life and you know all authority belongs to him in heaven and in earth and it's in that authority you're moving forward going wherever you are going doing whatever you are doing feel that authority sense that authority acknowledge that authority believe that authority confess that authority the authority of christ and it says we shall be taught all things whatsoever he has commanded and that we should observe have you got anything in the message you're going to observe anything in his word you're going to observe anything according to his calling you're going to observe teaching them to observe tell the lord all that i've heard i will observe i will obey and then you live a victorious life observe obey keep do give your life surrender your life unto the lord and say lord here am i your authority your control is upon my life teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i've commanded you told us to repent have you observed that have you repented he told us to make restitution have you observed that are you just piling up guilt and condemnation no restitution you can't say sorry to the people you have offended you have not restored the money that was told you cannot rectify that thing that is crooked in your life now observe to do what he has commanded make the right the wrong things right in your life abandon forsake every sin every transgression observe to do if any man being christ a new creature it's a new creation old things are passed away and behold all things have become new new life new language new devotion new lifestyle observe to do and he has the ability is the always able savior always able savior is able to make you overcome temptation is able to make you overcome every trial is able to make you overcome the peculiar trait of anger in your life. That boisterous temper, angry temper, violent temper, able to make you overcome. Able. Able. According to the power that worketh in us. That lifestyle of the snake in the green grass sneaking sneaking doing evil and hiding it it's able to make you overcome a kind of nature that will become sincere transparent 
holy and you're not just behaving hypocritically like the green snake in the green grass able able to save able able to sanctify able able to empower in the holy ghost able able to heal able able to deliver able able to make you free from anxiety worry fretting able able to deliver you from the fear of man and your life is stable here and there because of the people you fear but christ is able able to make you stable sanctified steady solid real sanctified steadfast character able able to embolden you that you live a confident life not self-confident savior confident spiritual confidence able able to make you tread on serpents and scorpions able able to make you overcome all the power of every enemy he's able and he has the perpetual ability always able always able always able to overcome in every challenge you face in life And it gives us permanent authorization. Authorization to use his name. And he says, whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Authorization. Whether believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also. Because he's gone to the Father. Authorization to walk in his steps. Authorization to live like he lived. Authorization to preach.